Hi, I'm Peter Higgins. I am presenting on uh, Dojo Patterns, and this is me, um, Dante Do Dojo Toolkit. P. Higgins on Twitter, wonderful. I want to, before I get into any of, uh, any of this, I want a big, huge round of applause for Chris and Laura. Seriously. I'm really just stalling. I only have three slides. Um, <laughs> seriously, though, they've done such a great, great job in getting this together. And just to have a, a JavaScript conference here that, that we can do this, it's, it's phenomenal. And uh, I salute you. So I am a huge, obviously, a huge fan of JavaScript, or else I, I wouldn't be here with the rest of you. And, uh, and I work for Dojo. That is what I do. The history of Dojo, and this is, this is the exciting, I only have three slides, I swear to God. Um, it was started by this guy, Alex Russell, and uh, if you've never gotten a cease and desist letter before, name a product NetWindows, or something with the word Windows in it. And uh, that's what Dojo started as, essentially. It was uh, started as NetWindows, turned into a foundation of, of a couple of JavaScript hackers that had a unified vision for just JavaScript. Let, let's make an API. Let's make a dojo foundation where we can license this, um, and then the rest is history. We've come into, we have 40-some-odd uh, core committers that are full-time dedicated to, to the betterment of dojo. Um, Dylan Schiemann is uh, the founder of SitePen and one of the original founders of the dojo foundation. So the, what dojo is has changed. Today is, in fact, Dojo's five-year anniversary. Um, today was the first day that uh, the, the NetWindows mailing list email went out five years ago. So that's kind of significant in, in that, wow, it's been that long? That's amazing. So um, we became a JavaScript toolkit. We're not anything, a framework or anything beyond tools. Uh, lightweight base starts at typically 26K. It can get down as small as 6K. And uh, somewhere on 17K is another, another variant uh, for WebKit, which is uh, I'll explain later. Um, we're probably going to hover right around the 30K mark in 1.4 because of a, a project that I also do called PlugD. Uh, it probably should be pronounced plugged, but uh, I call it PlugD because I refuse to follow conventions. So it's, a, it's just a use at will library. It starts with this small base, and then you get all of these extra components, right? Like, it's, uh, uh, everyone's familiar with XKCD, right? <laughs> right? So Dojo is to JavaScript like Python, in my humble opinion. Um, it's like you're flying. I, I go uh, you know, err on the side of the medicine cabinet comparison thing, but I think it's the Python, but I think it's the Dojo really, because it's like flying. If you want something, you just require it. And it goes on and on. Calendars. There's a require for it, and it pulls it in. File uploads. Everything you could ever think that you wanted is probably there. You just don't know it yet, right? Uh, it's partially the documentation, which is my first point on uh, what's wrong. But it just goes on and on. There are so many wonderful components in Dojo that are just there. So not only it, it's, it's not so much that you have to use the, the framework. OK. Uh, think. The South Park, right? Have you seen the South Park where he's going around trying to do something that, that The Simpsons hasn't done? <laughs> that's, that's what Dojo is, really. It's, we've been around so long, we have so much stuff um, that it's not necessarily the best way to do it, but it's there. And it's licensed, it's free, and you can use it, and you can take it, and you can port it, and you can modify it, and do whatever you want. But really, consider looking at it for nothing else other than to learn the JavaScript, because there's a huge huge amount of talent that went into this product. Um, so it adds up, right? Uh, go back. It adds up. All of these modules that you're, that you're doing, requiring in or whatever, um, are individual JavaScript files. And, and contradictory to the, the performance talk we saw earlier, um, that's probably a bad thing, because it's individual files. And it's individual uh, you know, synchronous uh, requests out onto the server. So 
the Dojo solution to that is the Dojo build system. It's like an all-in-one optimization kind of thing that happens. It starts, uh, works transparently with our package system. So when you Dojo require something, all of the dependencies are tracked, all of the, all of the uh, modules are pulled in in order, dependencies within those modules are tracked, but when you build, it all turns it into one file. You group the modules into layers. You group them into optimized layers. You can have uh, like a first layer and then an additive layer that you lazy load after the initial page load, uh, the deferring of widget loading, stuff like that. It's, uh, you create these optimized things. We do it to CSS as well. Uh, within our themes, our, our, our widget UI library is called Digit, and uh, their theme files are only at import calls, or the roll-up theme file is. It's just a bunch of at import calls, which Steve Sauters will tell us is a horrible, horrible way to do anything. But uh, it works because it works, and then we import the at, the at imports just like we do the requires, and it concatenates single layer CSS files. After you do that, we do to both of the JavaScript and CSS, white space removal, comment removal, and uh, new line removal. Just wasted cruft. Um, and then shrink safe as well goes through and does the variable obf obf obfuscation that uh, YUI compressor basically does as well. They're, they're essentially the same thing. Both of them are based on Rhino. Both of them have essentially the same output um, as far as bytes on the wire. Uh, and then on top of, on top of uh, the removal stuff, we have Strip Console and a bunch of other uh, interesting options, but Strip Console is interesting because it'll actually just remove the console debugging statements that you put in. So you can accidentally leave a console log in a thing and after you go to production, it'll be removed if you, if you uh, do so. Uh, there's varying levels, so you can strip warn log but leave error because they're part of your, you know, part of your API. Um, and that's not so interesting to everybody because everyone's like, well, but why, why uh, do you have console logs in your code directly? You can't use that in IE, but we all know about Firebug Lite. Um, and Dojo has shipped Firebug Lite as part of its package for years now. So we're kind of spoiled in the sense that I've never known a time when I couldn't use console, uh, any of the console calls. It's just kind of transparently there, which is really, really ni nice. I'm really gonna try and rush through this because we only have you know, uh, 50 minutes, so bear with me, and if I'm going too fast or if I'm going too slow, stop me, and feel free to ask any questions along the way and just throw something at me, get my attention. Basic APIs, require, add on load. After the require is done, you can add on load. So it works just like a DOM ready um, function, and then you can uh, embed them. Add on load, require, add on load, require, add on load, require, and it's always going to be um, accurate all the way down the chain. You can do uh, the, the require thing. You can do your own custom code as well um, in the module system. Uh, this is the, the, the first most complicated example, and the only complicated example is two directories down. If you put your namespace as a sibling of the Dojo namespace, it works transparently. transparently. It, it thinks that whatever your folder name is, your root namespace. Otherwise, you have to define where it is in the file system. It can be an absolute URL. It can be whatever you want. It's very flexible. Um, and then you just dojo require my code, and it goes off and fetches my dot, 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 my code dot js. Uh, if deft in JavaScript, another cool build feature, right? Um, you can do if deft in JavaScript. It's really, really cool. And it's not really cool until you realize the kind of things that you can do with it. Um, we are using it for uh, WebKit. Right now, we have these uh, if defs all over the code where we've eliminated the uh, IE branch, basically, for a lot of our functions, and we've gotten our build for WebKit Mobile almost under the cacheable limit. <laughs> so we've got a, a, little bit, uh, a little bit to work out there, but it's, it's almost under the cacheable limit. It's, uh, I believe it's 17K compressed, so it's uh, like 39 something uh, before. And it occurred to me earlier today, I could probably get rid of that with uh, with uh, animations, CSS transition animations, rewriting our APIs in that, getting it down to something smaller. But I haven't done that yet, so. These are uh, a couple of special builds. Um, the Stubbs Dojo uh, is really, really cool. It's a 6K Dojo that has all of the APIs in it, but it's only 6K. And then if you actually call the API, it goes out and fetches it and pulls it in, and then you can use it. It's not for performance reasons, it's for size reasons. You can get it, this gets under the, the 6K or the 25K limit on the, on the iPhone. 
but it's definitely not uh, performance. But you can go the other way with it too, base plus plus. Um, you can roll extra code into Dojo.js so your solution is a single file. We typically recommend you don't mess with Dojo.js and leave it as a 26 and then do your one layer on top of it, but in stuff like Air or whatever, you can really just you know, deploy a single JavaScript file with your library and your production code in it and ship it and it's done, which is awesome. Uh, Plug D is another special build where I use uh, I use uh, the if def stuff to conflict. There's a, there's a, I'll get into it a little bit later, but it, it, it automatically runs conflict or dojo conflict. Uh, scope burning as well, which is uh, kind of interesting. It's, it's our solution to running multiple dojos in the same page, which we've been able to do since uh, 1.1. 1 .1. Um, we're currently at 1.3, so it's been about a year since we've been doing this. But uh, the scope burning, you can remap the dojo namespace on the fly or on page load to something else. So you can be like Mojo or whatever you want to do uh, based on just making a build and then you just access the APIs that way and it works transparently. Um, so I used scope burning to do something really, really cool called Mojo and it's kind of funny. <sighs> it doesn't look anything like Dojo. It was uh, me working with the, the MooTools team joking around one day uh, and uh, this is this is Dojo code. This is uh, automatically all you do is have to load. There's a link. Um, I don't know if you can really read it. Uh, it's on my my sandbox link that was uh, originally on the thing. But it's Dojo Place is the real API. So this is using a, a, a special if def to allow a function to be called when you load the page to export all of the Dojo namespaces into the window object, which is not something Dojo would do, but it's something Dojo could do. <laughs> so uh, it actually, it, it, it speeds it up considerably. Um, things on the window in IE are probably the fastest way to access them, it turns out, uh, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, and that's what the, the if def stuff uh, looks like. Um, exclude start, and then if you pass an auto conflict into your profile, that everything in between the exclude start and stop uh, based on the tag is removed. So. Normally, you have this conditional, uh, conditional thing, but you know, if, you're, if you're building it specially and you know what you're doing, then it does it for you automatically. And then Dojo Export NS is a uh, Plug D plugin which maps from one to the other. Dojo Global is the window. But uh, we use Dojo Global so we can switch it in different environments. Um, and Mujo introduced something very, very interesting uh, that I, I, I put Mujo in with the Dojo speed test, and Mujo beats Dojo for whatever reason. It's, <laughs> it's, it's faster than, than Dojo, uh, which is incredible, um, but it is. And it's the same reason I had, I had Plug D in here as well, uh, just to test, because Plug D does a little bit of magic to Dojo that even Dojo wouldn't necessarily agree with, but um, I like it, and I use it, so I've done it, and uh, I'm the project lead of Dojo, and I'm working on getting it back into Dojo. <laughs> so it's, uh, we've, got, we've got a very, very serious dedication to backwards compatibility that we just can't break, so uh, especially in the dot releases. Um, in 1.4, we'll probably see a lot of the plug the APIs, but um, not anything that will break. Uh, so put plug D in here, and it was faster. That was interesting. Um, so we put Mujo in here. It was even faster. But it, it totally comes down to the object um, association lookup, which I'll be talking about more. Uh, not, not today, because it's brand new information that we've just discovered. Um, but Internet Explorer, JScript, is considerably, considerably slow uh, in, its, in its object lookup stuff uh, that you wouldn't expect. But if you've never seen task speed, this is what kind of pointed it out. And uh, John touched on, on uh, yesterday a little bit about what is, what is wrong with using browser, browser numbers. Um, and it is, it's seriously flawed. And, but task speed is, it is flawed, right? But the point is it's fair before right. Um, I took a lot of, a lot of uh, effort into um, getting each of, the, each of the library authors for the tests in task speed were written by the, the leads of the associated library just to avoid any, any potential uh, you know, bike shedding or, or arguing about it. it. It was never intended to be like a, a definitive kind of selector suite. I, I was just interested in the 1.3 APIs and started testing them. Um, it was fair before write, which is great because Alex leaked it 
Uh, he talked about it when we released 1.3, and I was pissed, and I was like, no, nobody was supposed to know about this, blah, 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 but he did, and I'm glad I did because I was saved, because <laughs> nobody could like mob me for, for doing it. But it's an interesting start. It, uh, it, it runs the test, it runs the test, it runs the test, and then it uh, submits them back to, to a back end for charts. And uh, you can go to Dante to Dojo Toolkit org task speed and find the link to the charts, which are charts by Dojo, uh, ironically, um, in our graphics library charting uh, thing. But the point is, it's just JavaScript. Like we have all of like all of these things that that I just did. I, I, the Mujo, uh, there's a Jojo version in the Mujo, which exports uh, Dojo to the dollar sign or the, the Dojo query to the dollar sign. Um, but it's just JavaScript, and it's a very flexible, beautiful language, and it's it's a lot of fun. The the, the earlier I was talking about the the type coercion, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I like that so much. Like I, I like the fact that it's just flexible. So, but. We have JavaScript, and things JavaScript should have are the basics, right? There's like a lot of core APIs in Dojo that are, are just there because the originals don't work. Index of, right? Find an index of, an array, uh, last index of, first index of, that kind of stuff. It doesn't work in IE, so we made, we made a, uh, a function to do so. For each map and filter, no brainers, right? They, they, everyone should have those. Um, hitch and partial are really cool, but it looks like we're gonna get bind in uh, uh, whenever the browsers adopt it, <laughs> which is great. But it's kind of like the, the, pull the pull the leg out from under you, uh, the good grief from, from earlier is, yeah, we're gonna get bind, but really not a browser is gonna implement it until you know 2015. Um, and then we're stuck with it, but we've got the, the hitch and the partial now that, that work um, safely namespaced to delegate, mix, and extend. All these basic things. Everything in JavaScript is an object. You should be able to have object manipulation tools. Um, so Dojo has a des the design philosophy around it. Is It's everything stubbed off of the Dojo namespace, and that's, that's not, so, uh, not so desirable to some people. Um, so, but that's on our defense. We, we're, we're designed to be in hostile environments and, and be consumed and, and share and play nice with other people. Um, so we don't use any names, or we use namespaces, don't use any globals. Um, and then on the offensive side, we're, we have forward-thinking APIs. So, so we're deferring to the native implementations as best we can. That's minus the slightly longer reg up version comment. That's Dojo's implementation, implementation of a trim API. It's pretty basic. Uh, Dion Almar uh, made fun of me because, uh, not, not me specifically, but we also have a Dojo string trim, which is the faster, much larger version of it. So if size isn't the, the consideration. Then, uh, and then, of course, the, the array uh, methods that we're all familiar with uh, for each map filter. Mozilla was kind enough to give these to us. Uh, nobody else uh, really has yet. Uh, WebKit, I guess, is good. And then Chrome probably has them, but I've not tried. So I'm just used to using the, the Dojo for each. And it's, there's intentionally no magic there's, uh, in it. It's straight up for an array. It doesn't do uh, for in lookups because that's just an extra code path in it that you have to detect. And really, why not just implement the, the forward-looking APIs? At some point, we can replace for each with some kind of sniff to the, the native APIs. Same with map and filter. Because of these design patterns, we are able to do really, really clever things and fun things. So some people don't like uh, extending native prototypes. Some people do, uh, some people don't. I don't myself, but I do sometimes. I actually do it sometimes in, in, in pragmatic cases where I know I'm not gonna be consumed and I know I'm not going to be used with other libraries. Um, so I wrote a, a function called Dojo Clobber, which safely extends uh, prototypes like that. Uh, it's uh, it's the, the opposite of extend, dojo extend, which is cool. But because of the, the patterns that we, that we already have, the map call is really just the same as it would be. It's just taking off the, the actual object. So the, the pattern there is that all of these things, because of the forward-lookingness of them, and then returning this just you know, a, allows you to, to chain off of the, the new array or whatever. And then, so the, the native thing in action, there you go. You've got an array and you map it down and then you go through and for each it. And it's all, it's all based on the, the defined specs that already exist. And that's actually, um, 
a project I kind of started. It's not uh, a full project, but it's on Google Code. It's called Dojo Type. I thought it was a pretty clever name if, uh, if you've never uh, had any experience with the prototype JavaScript uh, library. Um, that's what it is. So this is a, a quick glance at the, 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 the code style in Dojo. So you've got the, the regular, you know, call the Dojo, and then we've seen that you can, you know, replace it with nothing. Um, but it, it all, these are all the patterns that exist in Dojo. And I'm going to explain them, but basic stuff, right? Like connect is uh, custom events, um, object events, DOM events, whatever you want to do. Um, the uh, object sync stuff there is transparently going through the, the hitch and the partial, which is uh, currying, basically, or, or uh, rescoping. Um, XHR functions, animation functions, regular DOM style functions, uh, placement functions, all that kind of stuff. CSS selectors, everybody has them, blah, 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 right? Nodeless prototype is the the instance that is returned from a uh, from a Dojo query call, and extending nodeless prototype is writing a plugin. So if you put a function on nodeless prototype, you are welcome to. That's what it's there for, and that's where you put your plugins into Dojo. So kind of getting into the basic patterns that Dojo uses. Um, one of my favorites is the magic arguments. It's, it's a, a very flexible thing. I never, ever want to see ordered arguments anywhere ever again um, on, a, on a function call because it's entirely too difficult to change. Um, by using a magic argument and defining defaults and then mixing in the argument over the defaults allows you a very, very clean kind of short way. So this, this will accept no arguments um, at all. So if you mix in a prop, a new prop, you get bar. So it's, it's a very flexible way to, to have great, great APIs, right, that, that you can add to and you can remove from without having to worry so much about where they are positionally. Positional arguments are mind-numbing. Mind and also, Mixin, um, Mixin is relatively interesting in the sense, there we go, that you can build up these arguments. Um, so you don't necessarily have to pass the object directly or whatever. You can, you know, here's my, my root object. I'm going to go along the code path, mix in one more object, go along the code path, mix in one more object, and then at the end of it all, I'm going to uh, just execute the function with, with the, the final object that I've generated. So it's, it allows you a lot more flexibility than having to repeat that function call in different places. Does anyone use Java in here? Like, okay, so, yeah, exactly. I had a horrible experience, uh, my first experience with Java, trying to, to make a function that accepted a different, a different number of parameters. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you had to write a whole new function for it, like, and it was the same name or whatever, and it's, it, uh, it's amazing, but you don't even need to think about that stuff. Uh, it's just passed around the object. So, the DOM arguments, um, pattern that I that we have. Uh, See, so everyone's familiar with get element by ID, right? That's the, probably the, it, it's broken in Internet Explorer, by the way. Um, so, in the cases where it would work, right? And that's that's a valid piece of code. Set the style, the width to 200. So, why why not make a utility function to fix by ID? We have Dojo by ID, right? And it accepts a string. Um, so n equals dojo by d, and then the, the, the pattern that allows us this is we can pass a node reference to it, or we can pass the string id to it directly. So we can skip the by id call, but if we already have a node reference to it, why not just keep it around and, and reuse it? Um, so we're allowed, to, and then of course the dojo query way. So our style API, all the DOM APIs do this, with the, the first one being a node, string, string or DOM node, right? and then whatever the ordered arguments are. So property, property. And then in the query case, it's just assuming no nodes, bulk operations. So your node is assumed for you and we iterate over it and call the same function n times. So pretty cool stuff. Oh, I went the wrong way. So that's, that's how we fix the DOM. Um, and this is how we do it. Uh, it's basically the same as your uh, last example, except our node is now just being filtered through by ID. 
not a big deal. So that one line of code gives us the flexibility to, to, to repeat that pattern throughout everywhere. Um, node ref, and then of course the, the props that get mixed in there. Um, ambiguous constructors. Uh, Dojo has uh, object-oriented inheritance stuff, but on a, on a basic level, you don't really need it. This is just plain old, you know, uh, functional prototype, whatever. Um, so something is something, and then we mix in this, the magic arg that we were passed. So we're mixing into ourselves anything that was, uh, that is a, a member function, right? So we can, uh, well, the extend is extending the prototype, and that's, that's the basic pattern for, for making class objects. But by passing in this opt x and this mix in or whatever, our opt is then overloaded to be x. We can do this with functions, we can do this with anything that can be passed in just because we're kind of haphazardly mixing into this. It has side effects if you start overriding like private methods and stuff, but you should know better and you should be uh, smart enough to know uh, what to do. <laughs> you can always call the inherited function as well. Not, not in this example, but in this example you can. Um, uh, Dojo declare is the you know, class create, whatever it is that, uh, that, you, that you do. So create something. It's the same exact example as before. Inherit from nothing, uh, null. Give it some uh, an option, and then you just list out in this object hash um, all of the all the different member things for this class. Um, so you make new something with nothing, or new something with an x, and uh, it's the same exact thing. So by doing this, by using allowing these ambiguous constructors. Uh, to, to just mix in haphazardly. The Dojo parser um, is an add-on kind of thing for these things. The Dojo parser will turn uh, DOM nodes decorated with a Dojo type uh, attribute, which a lot of people complain about, but it's, that's not the discussion. <laughs> um, it, will, it will instantiate this into a new sum class thing, and then it will use these properties. So it's the exact same, uh, same exact, these two things are the exact same uh, everything. <laughs> or you can do it from no, do no DOM node at all. And in the widget case, at least a DOM node will be created for you, but you have to place it in the DOM yourself. Uh, so, so you really don't have to do any kind of div stuff. But this is very, very pragmatic. It, it's a very easy way to, to just do things, um, especially in prototyping. So, and then the next wonderful, wonderful thing, uh, and this is partial is the cousin of hitch, but functional JavaScript, don't repeat yourself, right? It's a kind of a fundamental thing. So you have your function called my turn it, and it accepts a direction parameter, and if it gets past a one, go left, whatever, or uh, one go right, two go left. So you have the one, instead of having a my turn left, my turn right, you just have a turn it function. And then you can, uh, wherever you are, partial, create a partial function. It's uh, like currying. Um, this is actually bind in uh, prototype and uh, in new ECMA. Um, so next is a function. When called, it will call my turn it, uh, passing it one, and previous will call my turn it, passing it negative one, and then later on we can just reference the function. Um, when we click on the next button, call the next, and we can reference that next uh, variable anywhere within that scope that we created it. So same uh, dual service functions. This is a great pattern. Um, and, and this is actually, I didn't really touch on it back at, back at task speed. And um, task speed was so flawed, but it did show us one thing, or two things, two very, very important things. Um, a, none of us are optimized for Internet Explorer. Every, everyone, Internet Explorer is just slow. That's you know, un unquestionable, but it's, it's more painful than we're anticipating, um, and it's, we should do more about that. Uh, it's still the majority of the browser market, so we not, need to stop being like evil, evil hackers and all excited about how fast this runs in Chrome and WebKit for beta, you know, <laughs> Safari for beta, right? But, uh, and focus on the people that are actually using our products, right? So, but the other thing that it showed us is that Dojo is fast. Um, for whatever reason, it, it's fast enough. It's it's whatever. It's it, the the argument is is not there. So so uh, dual service functions. You write a function that works on the pattern of node args. 
it accepts the string or ID, string or node reference, and then it does something. And it does it as fast as it possibly can. On one node, it does it optimized for that. And then it's just a matter of adapting it as a for each for query to, to have this, this low level API that you can just do and then there's the bulk operation, so. There's a, there's a couple adapt as uh, in the series for Dojo node list. Uh, there's adapt as for each, adapt as for each with conditional. Uh, they're all documented in there. Um, they're brand new in 1.3 as part of a, a huge performance boost in node list that we, that we did uh, between 1.2 and 1.3. Completely backwards compatible. So this is, and the node list is where you get your chaining in Dojo, uh, basically, but it's not exclusively limited to that. Um, it's really just this. Uh, anytime you return the object that you're working with, you can call another method off of it. And that's, it's just a matter of returning this. So like in graphics, the shape creation returns this. So you can add a fill and because there's nothing that needs to be returned from add fill, we return this. So we can continue on. You can do var x equals new graphics shape from a surface and then x dot add fill or x dot set stroke. It's a little bit easier to debug because it's not all on one line and not all on one long function call, but it's a, a lot easier to, to write without it. So back a little bit to the, uh, the, uh, the global namespaces that we have. Dojo seems a little verbose. To, to do something like select elements by class or do something by ID. Uh, jQuery has the dollar sign uh, there for the, the class and then they have uh, the same thing for the ID so they don't have a direct function to get a, a node by ID that's uh, any faster than instantiating an entire jQuery object. Prototype has the double dollar sign for its selector engine and then a single dollar sign for its ID which mm, is just confusing to me. Uh, to see that people, like they put these libraries together on, on a page and it, I couldn't imagine even trying to read or, or work with that. Um, n no criticism at all, I'm just saying it, like, it blows my mind to see that many dollar signs. Um, and then MooTools follows the prototype example. Uh, this is its uh, element, so it, it allows you to chain single node operations and then the bulk operations on the double dollar sign. So plug D, allows you to use the dollar sign as well in Dojo conflict mode. Um, I had to name it conflict because we don't otherwise, but it, uh, I, I did. And then, uh, so after you call Dojo conflict, you can write code that looks like that. Um, or you can, uh, there's a bunch of other APIs in Plug D. It's in Google code uh, if you'd like to see it. Um, or you can do it automatically by uh, setting a DJ config um, on, the, on the script object, a uh, typical way of, of configuring Dojo before load, and then it will automatically call conflict, and then you'll have uh, the exported dollar sign to the query selector engine in Dojo. Um, or you can do it as a build step, and you can just pass auto conflict equals on, and then tell it the profile to build, and there it is. It, every time you load this on the page, you steal the dollar sign back. So it is conflicting, and it's not something that Dojo recommends, but it's, it's there. Um, expansion patterns. So once you get past this base, this base set of functionality and these, these base patterns that we're doing, um, it gets into a whole, a whole bigger world uh, once you can start loading in modules and you have to start thinking about things asynchronously because it is Ajax, right? Asynchronous JavaScript. Um, we have something called Dojo Deferred. Uh, if you're a Python fan at all, uh, it's just like uh, Python's Deferreds. It's a contract, it's an asynchronous contract that says, I'm going to, um, I will give you a response at some point. It's gonna either be fail or good or both um, in, in some odd uh, cases. So you define the contract and say, okay, do this operation. And when the contract is up, you get the callback, no matter what happened. You can do it on a timeout, you can do it on, uh, within a try catch. A lot of people don't pay attention or don't use deferred directly. Uh, it's kind of hidden from you. Um, the most indirect usage of using a deferred is in our Ajax functions. Um, XHR get uh, calls a, a get request, right, to a URL, to a URL, and then the load function calls. It will call 
asynchronously, but in the background, a deferred is happening. A deferred was created. In fact, the deferred was returned from the XHR get that you could further add callbacks and errorbacks to at a later time. You can pass it around um, and do that. So, and then, of course, Dojo Hip manipulating the scope uh, of, the, of the callback. So fun, fun stuff. This is a, the, the load keyword kind of makes you want to write code like this, where it's do something, and then in this callback, do something else, and then in this callback, do something else, and then in this callback, and then by the time you know it, you're nowhere near your, your 40 tabs in. Um, and why? I, I, don't, I don't want to do that. I want, I want a clever asynchronous, uh, clever asynchronous API. So I call XHR get, and then I add a callback right there in the place. And whatever you return from the deferred chain, you can, you can modify the data along the deferred chain, or you can just listen to it. So here we're just listening to it. As long as we don't return anything, nothing along the deferred chain will uh, get the new stuff. But in this case, the next place that gets it, the, the and post function, which is a function that I've defined um, up here, it's, uh, it accepts the data. It gets called, it gets past the same data, which is foo.html content. Um, but it gets past it lowercase all lowercase, which is great. And then, of course, we set uh, an error back in another scope, an error handle. This calls other scope error handle in the scope of other scope. It's a, a magic thing of Dojo Hitch, and that pattern exists everywhere in Dojo. Um, and then, you know, the elsewhere, add the callback, right? So that's fun, right, the asynchronous thing? Moving on into more asynchronous greatness, Dojo data. It's it's more than just data for the DOM. Like, it's, it's uh, we saw, what was it, TaffyDB. TaffyDB reminded a lot of us of um, Dojo data, the, the APIs. It's, it's uh, read, write, identity, and notification. Say, the read is the, the most basic of it. It says, I want an item, give me an item, or uh, I'm making a query, give me an item. Um, or give me all of the items. So you do. You have an on item callback that you can call, or an on complete callback that you can call. Uh, so you can either know each item individually, or do them all at once when the entire contract has been uh, fulfilled. Um, common functions and callbacks. Dojo data is just an API. It's 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 just an abstraction. It's it, there's no. There are two official data stores in Dojo, but only because they're sample implementations of this API. Um, the, of the read, write, uh, identity, and notification APIs. Um, the two are item file read store and item file write store, which basically are just JSON files, flat files, and it loads the file using XHR and iterates. But it maps this API, which is really, really useful when you don't want to think about how to, how to do the wiring. Um, there are a couple, uh, a couple of well, uh, okay, so we make a Google search store. This is a, another, this one's in Dojo directly, um, and we create a new store uh, with some parameters that um, requires API keys and, and stuff like that. But we require the module, create the store, and then send off the query. So what is our query? It's we're looking for Dojo in the Google search, and whatever Google says uh, on the search, we're gonna, on item. Every time an item is returned from this store, thinger add item is going to be called in the scope of thinger. Thinger is a widget I've defined up here. Um, and then when it's all done, I tell the thinger to render itself. Uh, each of the add items is you know, just a little couple lines of code that says I'm receiving a JSON object. Maybe I need to, to make a new row in a table, or I need to make a new option in a dropdown, or, or whatever it is. It's, it's a very, very simple way to do uh, asynchronous operations, and it's very, very clean. Um, Dojo Data, uh, this is a great example. I don't know if our, our bandwidth here will permit us to. It's called Stalker. Um, it's, uh, it uses Persevere, where uh, Chris did the talk earlier, but it's using um, a lot of Dojo technology, actually. The top part is a Dojo grid, where you can sort uh, the, the various headings and stuff like that. The grid is powered by a data store, that same data store is powering a data chart. The chart data is being fed from Persevere via Comet D. So we're, getting, we're simulating real-time stock updates by pumping fake data on random intervals into this thing as a demo. So uh, you can see it live if you uh, visit it, um, perseveresitepen.com, stalker.html. 
but the charts just kind of flow by and re-render, and you can, you can change the, the line, the way the lines interact uh, on the fly with the buttons and stuff. So it, it's a fun little example, but it's using a lot of asynchronous data technology to, to pull it off, and it's pretty, pretty simple. There are a lot of data stores in uh, Dojo X. A lot of them user contributed, a lot of them um, developer, like core developer contributed because we use them. Um, and or read store is uh, just a basic, it's not a basic, it's an extension on the uh, item file read store, which is the basic one, and and or gives you uh, better query uh, syntax. So you can, like, item equals and or, you know, it gives you more SQL-like uh, things. And a CouchDB REST store, um, we saw the CouchDB demo earlier. It's a Dojo data store that talks to CouchDB restfully out of the box using the Dojo data APIs. So. Um, CSS rule store gives you access to your style sheets using the Dojo Data API. Um, Flickr store, Google Feed store, all of those stores give you access to all of this information using the Dojo Data API. And the reason that the API is important is because you can write components that accept data, but you don't have to think about the store abstraction. So the light box. It's an image. This one's coming from Flickr, using the Flickr REST store. It could come from any service that I have that can provide Dojo Data API uh, data, basically. Um, the, the gadgets uh, use Dojo Data. The, the drop-down combo boxes, the trees, all of these little widgets can just talk Dojo Data for whatever reason. So it's, it's a, a great thing, and you can plug in whatever store behind it you want. So. And then um, I'm probably running short on time, and if I'm not, I have lots of time for questions, because uh, RPC SMD is kind of the, the final, final bit of this. Um, Chris showed a bunch of great stuff in his talk uh, with Persevere that kind of got into this. It's a lot the same. It's using uh, a service. It's called Dojo X RPC Service. Um, and then it uses JSON schema, basically, to, to define the APIs that, to communicate. So, in, I, I wrote the google.smd service, service method definition, I think is what it's called. But, uh, and then it defines all of these APIs. So Goog now is this service um, that I can call. And the RPC call is web search. So I call a web search, and then here's my deferred callback. You can do error back, you can do handle back, you can do the deferred chaining where you manipulate the data along the thing. It's all exactly the same. No? Yeah? Okay. So that's, that's, that's really it. I mean, there's, it's a huge, huge project. And it's been going on now for five years. But um, it's a large, very, very large active developer, uh, friendly, friendly developer base. It's great. And one of, the, one of the most compelling things about it, I think, is the licensing to where um, it's all licensed M, uh, BSD academic free license, uh, new BSD, ap academic free license, um, and it's just meant to be consumed. You can take it, you can hack it, you can do whatever you want, as long as you leave like the, the, a tr the copyright notice that says, hey, Dojo wrote this, right? It's, you can do whatever. Um, meant to be adopted in that sense, uh, and it's all covered under a Dojo Foundation. Um, it's all covered under the Dojo Foundation, which is uh, a nonprofit organization set up to, to own the copyright of this product so that there's, there's nobody that, that's singly uh, singled out for the, for the ownership. All contributions come in under a contributor license, like Apache-like uh, contributor license agreement. So you can know that you can, you can ship this code. Uh, it's actually, IBM is probably the, the biggest uh, motivator behind that because they, they ship Dojo in a lot of large products um, in their web sphere stuff and, and they want to know that, that they can basically, that the code is entirely clean. So um, are, do we have, uh, does anyone have any questions? How am I doing on time? <laughs> I have no idea. Good, great. Uh, so no questions at all, really? Oh, awesome, go for it. Well, I want to know how, uh, what it takes to build like a server side version of Dojo. Like if I want to use, like you were talking about the crypto stuff the other day or whatever, just some Dojo component, not in the browser. Is there a build for that? There is. Uh, we have uh, host environments. Um, it's the, the default one is host MV browser, right? But there's host MV Rhino and there's host MV uh, fire, uh, what is it? XUL. 
things like that. So you define the host MV, and that's, you, you might not have seen it earlier, but there was a, a call, a function called a dojo body, um, and it was a function. You define that in the host MV. Uh, how, how, and all of the rest of the code works transparently as long as it returns some kind of element that behaves like a body, so. Um, I was hoping you'd cover uh, the dojo doc test module. Oh yeah, I, I can. Um, I don't know if you had any opinions on that. So, or... I, I, are you talking about the the doc test one, where the in line, the unit tests are in the code like Python, or in the comments in the code like Python, or where they're actually the? It's a separate thing. I was just curious if you had any opinions. Oh no, uh, I think it's I think it's great. It, it kind of makes the code hard to read, and it doesn't really um, it doesn't really benefit like UI testing stuff. Because it's just the functional stuff, but you can do it. It's great on the on the low level uh, on the low level stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody questions? Well, no, great. That looks like that's me. I'm done. And uh, thank you all for. Uh, coming <laughs>